And joining us now is Ottawa's Mayor Jim Watson. And Mayor Watson, why declare the state of emergency now? Well, it gives more tools to our police officers as well as to our city staff to move more nimbly and more quickly. A good example is uh, during the pandemic, we declared a state of emergency so we didn't have to go through a long drawn out procurement process to get PPE, masks and gowns and, and the like. Uh, so this just speeds up the ability to go and get equipment and supplies that we need to deal with the crisis that we're facing in downtown Ottawa. And, and does it reflect an assessment that anything has become more dire or more concerning on the streets now? Well, we're seeing some positive movements. For instance, the police have cracked down on diesel fuel going into the, the red zone, this one called Red Zone, right in front of Parliament Hill. Uh, three arrests were made earlier uh, tonight, which is good news to send the message that we're not going to allow these dangerous substances going into the red zone so close to residential communities and Parliament Hill. And uh, the public, as you know, particularly those that live in the communities around Parliament Hill, uh, they're fed up with the boorish behavior, the honking of horns, the fireworks and the like. So we need to use every resource possible to bring a peaceful conclusion to this once and for all. It's gone on far too long. And so those residents who may be watching now have an obvious question for you. When will that happen? What should they expect over the next few days? Well, I wish I had a succinct answer for you, Ian, but I, I just don't. It's day by day. We're trying, you know, for instance, that shack that was built along the Rideau Canal by Confederation Park, that's now been removed as a result of police action and some cooperation from the people that were, were manning or staffing it. So we are starting to see some movement uh, that people understand. They cannot just simply go and put up a building without any permission on someone else's property. Everything about this story is so contentious, and I know some people have criticized the media for reporting on it. Others have criticized the media for focusing on what they describe as a few bad apples. How would you describe the scene there this weekend? Well, there are more than a few bad apples. When you see people letting off fireworks, they brought in bouncy castles, saunas, uh, whirlpools. This is complete insensitivity to the neighbors who live in that area who have not got a good night's sleep for 10 days for senior citizens who can't go out and grocery shop. So the, the, the behavior has been completely reprehensible. And uh, the organizers, and I call them that loosely, should be ashamed and they should be telling their individual members, get back in your trucks, go back to your provincial capital where most of the mandates take place and lobby them and let us take back our city. And as you mentioned, it's a complex answer to the question, when will that happen? Mayor, thank you very much for speaking with us. My pleasure, thank you for asking. Well, for a policing perspective on this protest, let's bring in a former chief of the Ottawa Police Service, Charles Bordelow, now a public safety consultant. And I'm gonna begin by asking you a question I asked the mayor as well. What's your sense uh, of, of how much longer this, this protest may continue? Well, it's good to be here, Ian. I think that's the million dollar question that the public is asking. When would this, will this end? Uh, you've got residences, you've got businesses that have been tre uh, tremendously impacted uh, by these demonstrators uh, that have come to Ottawa and taken over our downtown core. Uh, there is no clear answer to that. Uh, but, but what I am encouraged in seeing is the, the stepped up efforts by the Ottawa Police Service from an enforcement perspective. Uh, the number of tickets they've laid under the Highway Traffic Act have, has dramatically increased over the past couple of days. Uh, you're now seeing them uh, affect arrests around the ability to provide fuel uh, to, to, the, to the areas around uh, the trucks in, in, in the red zone. So those are all positive things. And I think you will continue to see uh, their enforcement efforts increase over the next couple of days. So hopefully uh, the truckers and, and the people involved in this will, will get, this, get the signal that the police service is there to end this and that they'll leave voluntarily uh, and that the police service will not have to use uh, escalation of force uh, to, uh, to bring this to a conclusion. I'll bet, as you gave that answer, there's a point at which some Ottawa residents watching might be wondering, why did it take so long to get to this point? What would the answer be to that? I, I, the decision to, uh, to start uh, escalating enforcement efforts, to start making arrests, is a very critical one, one that is uh, rife with, with a lot of dynamics, a lot of factors that have to be considered by the chief of police. And one of the, the key issues is that they want to try to bring uh, this demonstration to a successful conclusion without uh, any fear of, of injuries, both to the officers, to the demonstrators and the public. 
Uh, so timing is, is critical in when you start to uh, to affect these arrests because the escalation of violence uh, is very real. And with the individuals involved, there's a real uh, potential of this escalating quickly. Uh, so they want to, at all costs, avoid that escalation of violence. And I know that a lot of people will ask, well, why didn't they do it last week when there was 200 protesters and only 500 trucks? Certainly, there'll be a review uh, that will be done to, exa to examine exactly uh, was there a delay and what was the rationale around waiting to, uh, to today to start escalating th those enforcement efforts. And one last thing, you brought this up when I interviewed you earlier today on, on CBC Radio. There were some politicians who had pictures taken with some of these protesters. What would your message be to those politicians? It's not helpful. Uh, you have uh, uh, politicians taking pictures, uh, legitimizing uh, the, the cause that they're here for. And uh, at the same time, you have residents and businesses uh, that have been living through hell for the past 10 days, uh, haven't been able to sleep, uh, have have, have hear, feared going out, leaving their house to go to the grocery store because of the intimidation that they've been feeling by these demonstrators. So you uh, taking a picture uh, legitimizes the, the, the protesters and it's not helpful to policing operations in, in their goal to bring this to a successful conclusion. Charles Bordelow is a former chief of the Ottawa Police Service. Really nice to have your perspective tonight. Thank you. You're quite welcome, Ian.